Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Fun. On this episode, I embark on my first mission to work with polymer clay. Now, one of the really neat things about polymer clay is that you can fire it in your own oven, so no, no special equipment is required. In this episode, I try to make a clay figurine of the Zen master Dogen. Dogen was a 13th century Japanese Buddhist monk who is credited for starting the Soto style of Zen Buddhism. He was dissatisfied with the teachings he was receiving, so in 1223 he embarked on a mission to China to find a more authentic form of Buddhism. After meeting with several teachers, in 1225 he met Ru Jing. Ru Jing taught a different form of Chang-style Buddhism that agreed with what Dogen was looking for, and Dogen stayed there and learned from his new master. In 1227, Dogen returned to Japan with his teachings to establish his own temple. I took some screenshots and got some reference pictures so that I could make sure I got my proportions correct. Depending on the picture, it was either one inch equaled one inch of actual size that I wanted to build, or one half inch equaled one inch. For my build, I decided that one inch would equal one foot. Using the picture as a reference, I bend some armature wire, which will act as the main frame that I can put the clay on. A few cross pieces help hold the main frame in place. You don't want your wire to wiggle after you put the clay on, because that's how cracking will happen. After I have the aluminum foil body all filled out, I come in with some ultralight Sculpey. And the nice thing about ultralight Sculpey is that it really forms very easily, but it's hard to get good detail in. So this works really well when you've got a lot of mass that you need to fill out. I keep using the picture as a frame of reference to make sure that I get all my proportions correct. After we've added all of the ultralight Sculpey, we move on to the pink stuff. Now this stuff is really good because it is denser and as a result, it can hold details better. But it can be hard to get out of the package. Now one thing that people do to make thin sheets of this stuff is to run it through a pasta maker. But what I've done here is use two pieces of wood to act as a stopgap and then my marble rolling pin to make these nice little pancakes of clay. Here I'm moving on to the head. Now I took a piece of armature wire and rolled it up into a little spiral, and then I added some Sculpey to form the face. I knew that a majority of his face would be covered by his hat, so I didn't need to focus too much on details. I could just get the general impression of a face.
Using a ball of aluminum foil, I created a scaffolding for me to build his hat. Brushing on isopropyl alcohol is a nice way to smooth out any irregularities. The sides of this X-Acto knife has a really nice texture that I used to texture the hat to make it look more like it was made from grass. I realized pretty quickly that I shouldn't have put the holes in the center of my stand, but rather I wanted to put the figurine a little bit further back. All right, so we've had a little bit of cracking right here and right here. I'm not surprised because that is where I attached two pieces together. So this came in the mail in the nick of time. My God, my hands are dirty. All right, that's better. Okay, so this came in the nick of time and I'm going to try to drizzle this stuff back here, press it on and then put some more Sculpey on top of it hopes that that is going to hold it down. So I ended up pulling off that entire sleeve because I wanted to reattach it using the bacon bond making sure that it wasn't going to fall off later. I also, at that time, decided to fill the inside of his sleeves up so that they would be a little bit denser, which makes them heavier, but it also makes it a little less fragile. In the, in the film that I'm modeling this off of, Dogen carried a staff, but his staff was perfectly straight, which is a much harder thing to do than to make something that looks a little bit more natural. To make his hands, I put a clump of clay around the staff and then came in and cut out each of the fingers individually and then put a tiny piece around for the thumb. I was really impressed with how this turned out, being that hands are one of the more difficult things to make when you're drawing. But one thing I learned from Ace of Clay that is really important is to take the time to put a little pancake of clay on each knuckle and then blend those down. And it really gives the impression that the hand has a lot of depth. So overall, I was pretty happy at this point where I was going, but I could definitely tell that some things were proportionally not quite right. Hello, children, I bring you love. And Tia came in for a little uh, expertise and said no to the shape of his head. She spent some time reworking his head for me. Here she is removing the aluminum foil from the inside of his hat. Again, it's looking good, but it looks a little bit like the Narans from Babylon 5. So I come in again and try to clean up the face a bit, remove a bit of the jaw. And again, I did not intend on spending a lot of time making him look human because his hat will cover most of his face. I just need the impression. What I really realized that was my problem was that he did not have shoulders. So as soon as I realized that and I built up his shoulders, I was much happier with the overall shape of how it looked. Then I came in with my snakes of clay and started to build up the collar of his robes. This is where it really started to get satisfying because it felt like I was getting somewhere with this and it was really coming together quite nicely.
One thing that I wish I had done a little bit differently is when I used the Sculpey Ultralight, I wish I had made him a little bit smaller all around so that I would have more space to come in and fill in with the denser Sculpey. As a result, I never really got the texture that I wanted for his robes, but I tried to make up for that in paint. I had to completely rebuild the base of the armature because he was moving around too much. So I removed the legs and the feet that I had made and attached a bit of bent armature wire, which I then E6000 down. And this made it so that the statue was much more firm and it wouldn't wiggle. Because if your statue wiggles at all, it's going to crack the polymer clay as soon as it is dry. Then I made one big pancake of Sculpey Ultralight as my ground covering that I could then cut and form around his legs and around his staff. I secured it down with some bacon bond and that'll make it so as it dries and as time goes on, it's less likely to wiggle around and less likely to crack. I use a bit of aluminum foil to give some ground texture to the clay and then come in with some little tiny balls of clay for rocks texturizing each one as I went along. I really needed to hide that armature wire, so I built up some larger rocks around the base. And then after the base was in place, I put a little bacon bond on the armature wire and remade his legs and remade his feet. Coming in with an X-Acto knife, I cut out the sole of his sandal using very tiny snakes of clay I come in and make the straps for his sandals. So Zen is distinct from other forms of Buddhism. One thing that it really emphasizes is the full embodied experience of this moment. Dogen wrote, we should pause from our intellectual pursuits of studying ideas and chasing words and letters. We should learn the backward step of turning the light to illuminate from within. When we do so, body and mind will naturally drop away and our original face will manifest. So Dogen emphasized once again the importance of not focusing on the scriptures or the sutras or anything other than the direct experience of being. As Roshi Jindo Cohen says, Here the birds singing as birds, the trucks singing as trucks, the helicopters singing as helicopters. There is a certain quiet and stillness behind and through all the sounds and noise. Perfect quiet is not present until the heart is quiet. What really attracts me to Zen, it's this idea that when we engage with our life, no matter what the action is, our full attention is on that action. It's not thinking about what this action will do. So when you're washing a dish, your attention is not on what you're going to do with the dish, but rather your attention is on that dish and simply washing that one and only dish. Not thinking about the dishes that you've already done in the past or the dishes that you will do in the future. This dish right here, right now. And for me, this connects directly with the process of making anything. Our attention, our focus should be on what we are doing in that moment. Yes, we have the ultimate goal of making a statue, but ultimately, the statue comes together with a series of moments and a series of details. The more we focus on those moments and details, the richer the experience of building the statue will be.
As Nick Offerman said, it's an incredible gift to be able to make your own fun. And this is how I made my own fun. And now I'd like to see how you have made your own fun. So please share with me anything that you've created recently. And if you send me a video, I'll even try to feature it right here on this channel for our next video. For more on how to do polymer clay, check out Ace of Clay on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description below. I'd also like to thank Roshi Jendo Cohen for advising me on this project. If you'd like to learn more about Zen, check out his podcast, The Zen of Everything. You can follow us on Instagram at make.your.own.fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.